Hi, this is the Dell WD19DC and I'm just going to show you the USB fail. Right, having a look on the front, these are USB 3 connections and what happened is you can see this broke inside here. So this is quite surprising because these connections over here are not used frequently. The whole point of it being a dock is it stays on the table and I only plug this in and out of my laptop. So this is where I would expect there to be wear, not on the USB that's sitting on the dock, which is plugged in all the time. So there you can see the tracks, and there you can see the plastic that snapped from inside there. Right, so I contacted Dell and they said that the USB ports are actually not covered by warranty. So that means if you break this or it gets broken, that is for your account. And I do dispute that because if I put in a USB cable like that and it's pulled, as you can see, the sides here stop it from breaking inside there, number one. Number two, if somebody was very rough, surely you would see some damage on these corners here, especially if it was being pulled laterally or vertically. So the fact that this plastic broke inside there, I think this tells you more about the quality of that USB socket rather than whether I was rough or not. Because remember that this sits on a table and I'm not plugging this in and out. Anyway, so what I decided to do is repair this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to open this up, how to get to this USB socket. And I will show you the part that I've located on the internet, which I think is the same replacement part. However, I'm not going to be desoldering this. Unfortunately, my soldering iron is insufficient and I think you need a blower as well, which I don't have at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take in order to change that. But I'm going to stop at the point where uh, you need to desolder that. Right now, in my case, only this plastic broke off. So there is scope to put this back in. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to put this back in and possibly even carry on using the dock without replacing this USB. Right, the first thing you want to do is flip this around. There are two screws here. Now you can release this. You're sliding it out. It is quite stiff. That is what it looks like. Now to open this, you need to flip it around again, remove this rubber coating. All the screws are the same size. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, you can now remove this by pulling this upwards gently. Right, there are two screws there. You can slide this out, just be careful it is plugged in there. Once you've removed the fan, you'll now see two additional screws here. Right, you'll still need to remove one, two, three. Right, now you can remove the PC board from the frame. You now have access to the PC board. Right, you can see this is a double USB 3 connector. That's what it looks like at the back. That's what it looks like from the side view. Right, if you have a look at the pinout, there's the chassis, 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 chassis. So you'd have to desolder these four. Then you've got the first USB. This is the bottom row. So this USB aligns to these four pins here and then the five at the back. Then the top USB here aligns to these four USB and then the five at the back. You need to desolder these nine plus these nine plus these two joints here plus these two joints here then you could swap out the USB socket. Right, the USB 3 connector that I located, which I think is the correct replacement part, is a Molex right angle through hole socket type A 3.0 USB connector. I found it on RS's catalog. So you can search for orisonline.com. Don't worry about the ZA, that's just because of the country that I'm in. Price is in South African rands, but uh, that would equate to less than $3. The brand is Molex, and these are the other options. And for me, I'm thinking that the one in the Dell may not necessarily be a Molex, but it looks like this one would fit. So looking at the data sheet, you can see there the pins. And then, do you remember I showed you there was the four 
through holes and then the five, the four, the five. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take a measurement, so I can't say with certainty that it's the exact right replacement part, but it definitely does look right. Do not get one that looks like this. This is not a USB 3. As you can see, there's only two rows of pins and also the color is white inside. So having a closer look, you can see that this one does look pretty close to the one that is in the dock. Right, in my case, I'm not replacing this. I'm going to now move on to trying to get this uh, blue plastic back in and carrying on like that. Right, to put this back together, you go as follows. Right, this fits in one way. You can see there's a pin there that goes through that hole over there. Right, once you've seated this, now you just need to turn the screws. The fan goes in as follows. There's a space there for this post over there. And these tubes go on top of those posts. You can plug in your connector. Red wires towards the left. Screw and screw. Two screws. Only one screw here. Slide the lid on. Flip it round. One, two, three, four, five, six screws. Return the rubber platform. Slide this in by first seating it like that. Move it in slowly. It drops down and then you press in. Note the alignment here. And depress. Two screws. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to put this back in here. Aligning all those tracks. Right. So how this works, there are five tracks that slide into here. So if I show you the one over here, you can see one, two, three, four, five. And there's actually a groove for it. So, so what that means is I need to make sure that those five tracks slide one, two, three, four, five inside there. However, when it comes to the end, it must actually raise. It mustn't get stuck. There's a lip there that will block it. So if you look closely, you can see there's actually a thin space for where that track must travel so that it gets to the end. So what you'll find is if you just push it in, the track might get stuck towards just over there. But in order to get to there, you need to almost lift it up or get it into that line there. See, there's a little line there. So it's got to be done five times, but you do them all at the same time. Then the tracks that are towards the back, you'll see one, two, three, four. They have little protrusions which come towards here. And what happens is they actually seat underneath there, 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 and there. So if I show you on the top one, you might be able to see it. Those tracks over there, the, right there, that's a better view. I flipped it around. You see there, one, two, three, four, those copper tracks there, they have to get inside there underneath. So if I show you here, there's the little protrusion towards the end of each one of these four tracks. Right, so just taking this to pen and paper, so what has to happen is these little protrusions need to go underneath there, 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 and there. Then behind them are the longer tracks, almost like five fingers. Those five fingers have to slide in there, 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 and go all the way to the end over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny amount of super glue just on the face over there and just there, just so that it holds in place. I'm not expecting it to be very strong, but just so that it holds it in place. So you can see that I'm actually putting the super glue on the page because I don't want to drip it here. All that's going to happen is the drop is going to go in there and block my travel. So I'm now going to dip this in the super glue. So all I've done is I've dipped this in the super glue. You can't see any super glue falling inside there. And that was my aim. I don't want super glue to roll inside there. That is why I put super glue on the page and dipped this rather than putting the super glue here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find those first tracks, the ones that are closest to me, and line them up to these five recesses. And you may even see the tracks, the copper tracks coming through there. There they are. There, look, I've got all five of them. One, two, three, four, five. So they're ready to come through. But remember I said that it can get blocked on the root. So this is why you might need to lift it slightly. So what I've got is a very thin piece of wire and I'm just lifting the ends of these tracks so that it goes in to the correct place. Because what's happening is it's getting stuck on the root. You see it should come out like that, but it's getting stuck. Right, so I've managed to lift them and now all I need to do is get the those protrusions towards the back. You can see there they are. They're not tucked in underneath where they should be. Remember that I showed you they're supposed to tuck in underneath. So what I need to do now is to tuck each one of them in. Right, if you're finding that you can't get those in, just take a flat screwdriver and gently seat those into that spacing. And while those are seated, you can now depress this firmly in. There we go. Actually here a click. Right, so once you've inserted that, you should have five tracks all towards the end there, and then four that are hooked underneath. So if I show you here, there's one, two, three, four. So four would be hooked and five coming through towards the end. All right, so here I'll test it for you. That's the bottom one. And here's the top one. Right, so this was the faulty port. This is a USB 3 cable. I plug it in here and it is working. Obviously, you should replace the entire connector, but in my case, it's going to sit on the table and I don't plug it in and out and it's actually stable. It shouldn't have broken in the first place. This cable is connected to a hub. Right, so here is my hub. These are all USB 3 and I plug in. There's my mouse, you can see. And there I've plugged in my phone, it's come up on my computer and the USB 3 I've also tested because I've plugged in USB 3 hard drive and checked the transfer rates. Right, I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.